Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into field configurations. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. All right, so over in Jira, you're going to want to come over to the right side, go to the gear, go to issues, and then we're going to find field configurations and the field configuration schemes. We are going to be talking about both. But for full disclaimer, please make sure you are a site level administrator to be able to do this, because if you're not, you're not going to be able to get to this setting. And it's really critical that you have the right permissions to be able to make these configurations. So assuming you are a site administrator, let's jump back into the video and see what we are going to be configuring today. All right, so we're going to start off talk about field configurations. I am a big proponent of the babushka doll where you start at the smallest, lowest layer and you work your way up. In this particular case, you only have two layers. You have the field configuration and then you have the field configuration scheme. We'll cover both in detail. Okay, so coming into the field configuration, you're going to click on that and then you will see that there's a default configuration. This is normal. There's typically only one field configuration for all of your Jira, which can be a good thing because it standardizes everything. But the second you have a team that wants a special configuration just for them, you tend to get into a lot of trouble here because since there's really only one default field configuration that goes to every project, every project shares the same field configuration. As soon as somebody wants a special field required, well, that field becomes required for every project. And where you can get into a lot of trouble is if that project has the field in their screen, thumbs up, the field's not required. But for every other project that doesn't have that field in their screens, they're pretty much going to be blocked. They can't create issues. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've experienced this because field configuration configurations are probably the trickiest configuration of the mall in Jura. It's the one that usually gets most newbies a little bit tripped up. So I wanted to make this video to help you out. All right. So why do you want to modify the field configuration? So I kind of mentioned one reason already, right? And the biggest one is let's take this acceptance criteria field and we have a team, they want to make it required. And so we make it required here. And so we can click on it and then it becomes required. This is good, except you'll see that this field configuration is shared by 10 projects. And so all of these projects now have that acceptance criteria field required. And so what happens if I go hit the create button? If I go hit the create button, I put my title, my title here, and I click create, my acceptance criteria is needed, right? So something here, right? And that's good. But now let's change over to a project that maybe is not so lucky to have an acceptance criteria. So if I go to a project that doesn't have the field and I try to basically create it, I will put test and I hit the create button. You will see that it's asking me to fill in the acceptance criteria, except in this particular case, I don't have an acceptance criteria. So this could be very detrimental to teams that essentially don't have that field, but a different team wanted it and it's on their screen, but now you've broken it for everybody else. So in that particular reason, you primarily want to then create your field configurations. Another reason you would want to do it is for the renders. When you come over here and you look at the renders, not all fields can do this, but specifically your paragraph type field, which is the big blocky paragraph style where you can put in a lot of text. If you're in that one, you can actually change the render so that you can have either just the regular default text render, or you can make a wiki style. And when you do wiki style, it basically behaves more like the description field where you can add bullet points, you can add just special characters and all this formatting tables and stuff like that. So sometimes you get a, a team that requests, hey, I want it. I want to be able to have rich text in it. And so you have to change it. And again, when you change it for one team, you're going to change it for everybody that shares this field configuration. That's not typically a good thing. So what do we want to do? So what we want to do is we essentially want to make independent field configurations. And my recommendation, if you want to do this the right way, as in you're future proofing yourself, I recommend you make a field configuration by issue type. You don't have to do this. This is overkill. But if you're working with a team that has different fields or different rules for each issue type, 
then you want to basically match their workflow. So if they have a different workflow for their epics, a different workflow for their stories, and a different workflow for their subtasks, I recommend, again, just as a future proof, that you make a field configuration for the epics, one for the stories, and one for the subtasks. If they just have one workflow for all of their issue types, then you can probably get away with just having one field configuration for just that project. So your mileage is gonna vary here, but try to keep that in mind because I have seen that usually when a user requests for a custom workflow, later down the road, they're gonna ask for a custom field just for the epic, maybe a custom field just for the story. And then they're gonna wanna make it required. And now we're gonna get into trouble because even if you make a, a field configuration for a separate project, let's say that they want to make a field required in the epic, but not the story, well, now you're going to run into the same conflict, but instead of doing it globally across all Jira, now within your project, you're going to have a mismatch where a required field is in one issue type, but not in the other. And so to, in order to kind of save yourself from that headache, I recommend to come in here and make a uh, field configuration for each issue type for each project and overkill, but it's bitten me in the butt many a times. And why watch my videos if not to take my advice, right? And so we're going to come in here back into the field configurations. And to do this, I recommend you always start with the default because the default is usually the most pure, it's the most compatible because it works for everybody. And so I start by making a copy of it here. And then once I have my copy, I am going to now change the title. So instead of just copy of, I usually do project name and issue type, right? And then once I have that, I will hit copy. And then once I have this, I can come into it, I can go to configure, and now I can make whatever fields I'm gonna make required, require whatever renders I'm gonna change, I can change those required renders there. If I need to completely hide a field, I can then do so now without impacting all the projects. And you can see that this particular thing is not shared with anybody else. If you remember from the last example, this was showing that it was related or impacting 10 projects, this one doesn't impact anybody. And so this is good. So this is the good first step. So now you can do your changes here. Once you've done your changes and let's assume that you have two or three and let's just actually make a couple of them, right? We're going to do, well, we'll, we'll use this project name issue type and we'll do the story one, right? Once you have your fields, your field configurations, now we want to put them into a bucket because once you put them into that bucket, from that bucket, they get associated to the project. So we're going to do that step next. And so to do that, we're actually going to come over to field configuration schemes and kind of similar here. I like to just take the default because the default field configuration scheme is just already pure. But in this particular case, it doesn't matter. You can either take whatever's there or you can just make one here and make the special, oops, if I could spell, special field configuration scheme. And once you make it, you can click add. And again, you just created an empty bucket at this point. There's no, there's no special configuration that you gotta worry about. And so once you have this, this is where you're gonna associate the issue types with your field configurations. So you could essentially take the default, which means, hey, for all the issue types, I just want them to follow this field configuration. Could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. But if you take my advice, most likely when somebody has a special field configuration for an epic, they're gonna want a special one for the epic. And when they have a special field for the um, story, they're gonna want probably a, a, a specific field required in the story. So you wanna, you wanna kind of play by ear and this is where you can do it, right? So you can actually associate by the issue type. So I can go look for my epic and go, you know what? My epic's gonna get my new special project one that I made. And so now you can associate just the epic, but then leave everybody else alone. And so you can kind of add each issue type individually if you made them for each one, or you can just do this where just now your epics are special and everybody else is following the same rules. And once you have that, once you have basically this set up the way you want it, the, the breakdown is appropriate for, for whatever advice, whatever technique you need, right? Then you got to go into the project that you're trying to influence. And so we'll go into the standard template demo here. And what we'll do is we'll come over to the project settings. And then you're going to go under issues, expand issues, and then come down to fields. Once you're here, you'll notice that even though everything that we've been doing up to this point is for this particular project. It's not official until we come in here, we come to the actions and we use a different scheme. Once we use a different scheme, we can then select our special field configuration scheme that we made, click associate, and now everything's been ported over. And you can see how now just my epics are standalone 
and then everything else is still sharing the default. And you can configure this whichever way you want, but at the end of the day, you're gonna just wanna be a little strategic. You know, It helps if you map out what you're trying to build because it's really simple from a fundamentals. It's just complex because you can it can get very intricate, right? And so if you have any questions or if you're running into any trouble, let me know in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to give you some tips or advice. But for the most part, I try to follow the KISS principle. You try to just keep it simple and you should be fine as long as you kind of map things out appropriately and you talk with your teams to make sure you're getting the right requirements. And then once you just make, make individual field configurations, put them all into a scheme and then associate that scheme into that project. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like. If you haven't already subscribed by now, please smash that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to 